Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to part 8 of our Selenium with CSharp.net course. And in this video, we'll be talking about interacting with UI elements, especially drop down and multi select control. So, we have been talking about interacting with the UI element in our videos, something like this, where we have clicked a link using the click method and then we also typed a value in the text box using the send keys method and also we performed a submit method to perform a click on a submit type button something like this so these are things that we have already discussed and today in this video we'll be seeing how we can actually perform some more operation with some special controls for example a multi-select control or a drop down control for that matter so for demonstration of this particular purpose i have actually created a small page something like this where you can see that I have got an option buttons over here. I also have a multi select control over here. So you can see that I can select this one option over here. And then I also can hold the shift key and then I can select like multiple of them over here. So this is like multi selection operation. I could do that as well. And also I can perform a checkbox over here. I can select it. Also the option button. I mean, these are just like click operation that you gotta be doing basically. But essentially these two are some of the most complex control which I wanted to show you how that you can work on these controls. So in order for that to be demonstrated, I'm actually gonna create a simple test method this time. So for that, I'm just gonna copy this whole test method and I'm gonna create another test method over here. So I'm gonna say selecting or maybe working with advanced control and over here i'm going to be navigating to this particular page so i'm going to copy this particular url i'm going to paste it i know it's just looking like a c colon but you can see that once i copy from the browser and paste it over here it becomes file colon triple slash c colon slash test page dot html file so this even works to navigate to this particular page pretty much like how you do the browser pages so you could do that as well and once we have this I now have to perform a drop down selection. So how do I perform a drop down selection? So let's see if we have a method in our Selenium. For example, drop down. Oh, then we don't have it. Uh, or maybe let's say I, I'm gonna go find an element first. So I'm gonna go and find the element. Uh, and there is this drop down. So what is this particular element uh, name or ID? So you can see that the ID of this particular drop down is basically drop down and the name of this particular drop down is the drop down as well which is great and we can see that it is a select type and it has got option one as the value and there's a text option one and similarly value option two and the text is option space two so you see that these are things that is available for this particular control over here which is good so now we at least have got a drop down as the id and remember you can see that this is a select type so basically this tag of this particular control is a select type so we are going to use the select operation over here so how do we write this in selenium well in selenium if you want to identify a control using its id all you have to do is by dot id and then you're going to give the name as drop down that's it and then if you want to perform a send keys you do the send keys if you're going to perform a click operation you do a click but how do we select a drop down so do we have a select method or maybe drop down method or we don't have any of these method so how do i really work with these kinds of control that we have over here so in order for that i'm actually going to introduce you with another selenium's library which is something i really wanted to show you is the selenium dot support package so if you just go to the manage nuget package over here in the dependencies and you remember this is something we added in our second lecture of this particular series so you gotta be doing this for the second time today and over here in the browse you can just go ahead and search for selenium dot support you see that intelligence of visual studio is automatically thinking that these are the libraries that you may be using for this particular project like xunit xunit runner fluent assertion selenium web driver chrome driver and selenium dot support so this is the one that i was talking about i need this particular package this time because it's recommended as starred over there. So these are all suggested by the AI. And it tells us that these are the libraries that you may require for this particular project. So yes, this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this particular library. And guess what? The magic is gonna happen this time is you can now use a method called as 
select so i can just type select over here and let's fully type it probably it's not working up so you need to type something called a select element and if i hit control dot this time you see here now we have a new namespace called as openqa.selenium.support.ui so this is the one that we need this time this namespace has got the support for the select element class which actually has got the method to select the drop down so now i'm going to say select element is equal to new of the select element so basically i'm going to be calling this class select element i'm going to create an instance of the select element and i'm going to pass the i web element into this particular constructor so the i web element is nothing but this guy you remember because all the time we try to perform the operation of using i web element of txt password and then we pass the whole stuff over here and you also know that the return type of the find element is basically an i web element so we can directly pass this whole drop down from here to this particular code base which means now we have not only identified the particular control but we have also passed it into the select element constructor of the particular class file so now i can perform a select element operation for the particular drop down so if i go to the drop down this time you know that we have option one option two and option three and this drop down can actually be selected using its value which is option one without space or you can also select this drop down using its text like option space one as you can see over here so let's see if you could able to do that so i'm gonna say select and you see that there are two methods available maybe actually three methods available one is by text select by value and select by index so you, if you specify by index so it starts with the zeroth index so if you specify zero it's going to select the first one which is by default though and you can specify the index one which is going to be the second element index two is going to be the third element and if you specify index three which doesn't exist then it's going to throw you an exception there so you can do that or you can also specify the text so the text which i'm going to specify here is capital o option space one so if i do this it is going to select the first option but by default the page actually has option one so if you want to see this you need to select the option two at least so that you can actually see if that works or not so now this code is written so i'm gonna save the whole class file and i'm gonna let the test explorer to discover the new test that i have added which is going to be the working with the advanced test and i'm gonna run this particular test as you can see here it is selected as option two already so this is how you can select the option two or the drop downs from your selenium code so i'm going to show you again with option three so let's see if we can able to do that there we go so option three is also being selected which is great and now the next question naturally comes is like how do i select a multi-select control like this so what is this control basically so if i just go ahead and inspect it you see here this is also a select type but it has a multiple over here in the control and it has an id of multi-select pretty much exactly the same way it also has a value and it has a text over there so only thing different over here is multiple there so that is what we have to actually worry about this time so how do i actually select this particular element as well so as you know for the multi-select as well it is a select element so i'm gonna just do the exact same thing i'm gonna copy this whole code paste it over here and i'm gonna say multi select and the id is going to be multi select so i'm going to copy this id i'm going to paste it over here and i'm going to select by its text which is going to be multi one let's use the select by value this time instead of the text because we already tried it using text so i'm going to say select by value and i'm going to say multi one because that's what it is saying and then i'm going to duplicate this code by using Control d because that's easy guess what i also made a mistake we also need to use the multi select uh, variable instead of just select element because that's not going to work and i'm going to say two 
So now I'm going to run the same code. You will notice that this time we should have option three selected and it should also have two multi selected options selected. Do you see that it did selected these two options after the option three, which means it is working. So this is how you can see that we could able to perform selection of multiple elements over here. This is not it for this particular video. I also wanted to show you another most important thing. I mean, this is where we do the testing, right? So we also not just interact with these controls, but we also need to ensure that have we interacted with these controls correctly or not. That we do using assertions, but I'm not going to go into the assertions part yet, but I wanted to show you how do you get what options are being selected from this particular operation that you have performed. So I'm going to just go with the multi-select. Maybe for the homework, you can try doing it with the select element. But once you do the multi-select, you know how to do select element as well. So basically, what I, my quest is that this time is that I want to verify what are the selected options that I have got for the multi-select. Can you just list me all of them? So this may be your interview question. So how do you select all the elements and how do you get all the elements that you have selected? So in order for that to be done, we are actually going to use what is called as all selected option, this property. So there is this property which is going to get all the selected options within the select element. So this property is going to help you to do that. So I'm going to get this. OK, I got this. But now how do I actually use this? Well, as you see, the return type of the all selected options is I list of I web element. So now you see that this is not an I web element, but because it is going to return you a list of elements, because it's going to be returning you a collection of elements, it is basically an I list type. So now I'm going to say I list of I web element. So this is how we do it in C sharp where we specify I list and then the type as the I web element, whatever it is. And then we also say selected option is equal to. So once we have this, now I could able to get all the elements. But because this is in a list, I also need to iterate through all the collection. So in C sharp, there are many ways that you can iterate it. You can either use for loop, while loop, or for each loop. I'm going to go with the for each loop this time because that is the more simpler thing that you could do. So I'm going to use for each and I'm going to say, see that the intelligence is much enough, uh, intelligent enough to tell me what is the thing that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do an for each of I element of options in selected options. Let's see if the code is going to be written for me over here. Uh, well, looks like not. I have to write it. So I'm going to say console dot write line. And I'm going to use the option dot text. See that there is a method, uh, there is a property called as text, which you can use. So you see that this is a text. Um, you can also see if it is enabled or not, something like that. But basically, it's an I web element type. So you're going to get all the properties of the I web element there. So I'm going to basically print the text. So now what I'm trying to do in here in a nutshell is once I select the elements, I'm also going to get all the selected options. And then I'm going to store it into a collection and then I'm going to iterate through the collections and I'm going to print all the values that I have selected. And I'm going to run this test and see how it's going to work. So I'm going to just go ahead, run the test. There we go. The test would have completed. But now you see that there is a standard output this time and it tells that it has selected a multi one and multi two. So it's not printing you the multi one without space, but it is printing you the multi one because it's getting the text from that particular select element. So this is how we actually try getting the selected options using the select element. So now you are pretty clear of how that you can work with select elements for a drop down control also with a multi select option. The next homework that you probably have is like how you do selection of the option buttons. It is quite straightforward. I can just give you a hint about it. All you have to do is just go ahead and perform a click operation and see if that works for you or not. It's very, very straightforward because it's an input type. 
even though it is a radio type it doesn't matter you can use the click operation there and it's going to be very very straightforward well as i said catch you in the next one like how we can start customizing all these codes that we have written so far using custom selenium methods